Today on Groundworks, I build a custom door threshold for my theater door to help it seal airtight. Stay tuned. The existing door threshold for my theater side is made from poplar a full inch thick. This made getting a board from Home Depot a non-starter in the Phoenix area. I also meant reaching into my rough lumber stack. This one will do. I started by cutting it to a very rough width. This required two cuts since the entire board is wider than my cut capacity. This board was straight line ripped on one side by the lumber yard, although it since moved a little. It was still straight enough on this little bit of length though. So I was looking at how flat this board was after I went and cut it. And honestly, it doesn't need to be that flat because it's just gonna be a door threshold. Um, I'm gonna adjust it once it's down. But well, I noticed there was a bit of a cup to it and it skews just a little bit over the length of that. Um, not too bad, but eh, might as well try and join it a little bit. In the past, what I've always done for jointing stuff like this was just create a sled for my planer that would kind of support one part of that, run it through the planer, um, get one flat face, and then flip it over to get the other flat face. I was thinking, you know what would be really handy is if I actually had a dedicated jointer that can handle six inch pieces of wood like this. And then it hit me. I do have such a joiner. Yeah, so basically when I bought this house, this workshop came with this joiner, which is a six inch wood tech one from 1993 or so. Um, it was in really rough shape though, and so I never even tried to dig it out of the corner that it was in. It was all rusty, covered with dust, spider webs and everything. I thought, what the heck? I've actually had this now for six years, never tried it. Let me give it a try. So I went and took it out, Cleaned it off a little bit, got the majority of the rust off, and well, ran a few test pieces through it. And it works to a degree. I mean, it's not perfect by any means. The blades are a little bit rusted. The blades also have some nicks and gouges on them. But hey, let's give this a try. Let's see how it works. It had been a long time since I watched the how to use a jointer video, and so my technique is completely wrong here. I was putting far too much pressure on the board. I couldn't afford to go too nuts on the joiner though, since I was only about an eighth over an inch, and I didn't have a lot of material to get rid of. So I got close enough. Then I ran it through my thickness planer to get me within a 30 second or two of where I needed to be. After that, I was finally ready to rip the board to its final width and cross cut it to its final length. I also did a first rough sanding using a trick I learned a few years ago to first scribble pencil lines on the piece. And when those are sanded away, you know it's time to go to the next grip. Well, looks like a properly milled board now. It's almost too bad that it'll never be seen. I attached the board to the concrete slab using construction adhesive. I had used Red Guard waterproofing compound under the other side's threshold, but didn't this time since I'm not really convinced it's necessary in our super dry Arizona climate. If I'm wrong, well, then I'll just fix it when the future problem arises. I clamped it down, I guess, with a random block of concrete I had lying around. The two sides of the threshold were a little close in height, but not completely flush. Far more importantly though, the hinge side was notably higher than the other side. I decided to kill two birds with one stone, and while sanding the two pieces flush, I also would lower the hinge side by nearly an eighth. I could only get so far with the belt sander though, so even after all that, the bits closest to the doorstop were still notably higher. That meant getting some flat pads for my angle grinder and going to town with that. I could get right up to the doorstop that way. I still wanted the entire threshold to be roughly an eighth higher in order to better fit with my automatic door bottom in the door. So I cut out a piece of hardboard 
and then cut out the lower part of the stops to fit the hardware piece under it. This also got a dose of construction adhesive. And was also weighed down with a random chunk of concrete. The automatic door bottom still didn't work as well as I had hoped. And so I decided to install a door stop in the bottom as well. This would only be 3 quarter inch thick, so I didn't need any mill any rough plumber this time. I did need to cut an angle into the stop, but not on any particular degree. So I measured off eh, some amount at the max height of the blade. So yeah, what follows is a pretty unsafe cut. Unfortunately, I can't put my fence on the opposite side of the blade, which would make it a lot safer. I also haven't yet made a tall fence. So I attach the board to another piece to stabilize it a bit. This still has a very high risk of kickback. I was gambling that the friction of the pieces would keep them mostly in check, and then I just made sure I didn't stand directly behind it. And it worked! Next up is cutting a 1 8 inch rabbit on the stock and it's to set the weather stripping curve. My blade is a thin curve one, so I just made the proper depth cut and then just broke off the thin bit that was remaining. It cleaned up really nicely after some thorough sanding. I used plain wood glue for this step since it's wood to wood contact. This deserved an additional concrete block weight to accompany the original random block. I then extended the kerf to be under the original door stop as well. The weather stripping needed to be cut at 45 degrees, and so I used a square cut piece of lumber to hold it, and then cut the angle using a speed square and utility knife. The edges of the threshold were in pretty rough shape, so I sanded them flush and slightly rounded first with an oscillating tool and then by hand. The final step was to paint it all black. This would have been far easier to paint with the door down, but that's incredibly heavy and considering how much of a pain it was to install the first time, I certainly didn't want to do that again. So I just removed all the hardware, taped up the hinges, and went to town. Uh, I thoroughly hate painting, but well, needs to be done. Overall, I'm very pleased with the end result. The black paint is, yeah, a bit of a fingerprint magnet, but I can fix that in the future. What I really wanted out of this though was it for it to be able to seal the theater door airtight, and it does that in spades. I originally had had high hopes for the automatic door bottom, but no matter what I did, no matter how level I got the whole thing, it just didn't work correctly. That door stop I created though works like a charm. Thanks for watching.